All righty. Welcome, everybody, to the BKBK podcast, where sports and the culture collide and the New York Jets reign supreme. You now have joined our post-game show, our very first post-game show. Uh, we have me, your host, Brandon Phillips, a.k.a. B-Lover. That's right. My main man, Brian Taylor, and Captain Kyle McKenna. Kerry What's held up? us down in... Yes, that's right. Kerry held us down in the AM, but now we got him in the PM. So we got you, Kerry. So, guys, we just finished watching this game. Um, it, it, it's, it's safe to say that we are just thoroughly disappointed. Um, but we also have to remember that... Uh, with our new quarterback and 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 everything just being so new that we're going to have to experience our ups and downs and this was our first down where last week was our first up and i just wish that our first down wasn't against the miami dolphins exactly yeah so go ahead b talk to me about that a little bit man you know definitely disappointed uh with how we lost not necessarily that we lost But definitely how we lost. Um, You know, we're going to go through a couple of things here. But there were some notes that I took during the game. Um, You know, the the sack. Listen, I'm going to call this missed opportunities in general. Missed opportunities. So, you you know, we got the sack in the second half. People are feeling good. Then Donald throws the INT, which honestly I'm not really going to put on Donald. I'm going to put that on prior, not finishing his route. Uh, Copy that. You got Herndon, the non-touchdown at the end of the first half. I mean, that was key as far as momentum is concerned. Even if we get three points there, I mean, that's that we got to come away with points. But Herndon again, he he has a drop pass in in the third quarter, and this that one, was huge. Oh, that was that was huge, and this one not finishing that particular drive with a touchdown at the end of the second half. Uh, the offensive line, too many sacks given up uh, in key moments. The third and nineteen at the end of the game with the last drive that um that Miami had the ball. I mean, all out blitz there. Uh, Adams does not pick the running back up Gore out of the backfield and they get 20 yards on that. I mean, terrible. this is, that was terrible. Um, too many Tannehill runs breaking contain on the outside linebackers and then yep. field position, man, putting us in too many inside the 10 inside the 20. So to me, that was kind of synopsis of the game in general. And too, think, and, and, and too right. many penalties too. It, it, it the whole penalty thing reminded me that we may not have turned the page from like our penalty penalty tendencies of last year. And it's like, you know, bleeding into this year and we didn't have as many last week, but this week, man, th- this game, it, it, the, the old line, uh, Buster screen, you know, yeah. the ghost of Buster screen has revisited us once again, as far as just penalties and just bad plays and, and, um, you know, I'm going to question some of the play calling as well. Uh, I think the defense played very good as a whole throughout the day, but there were key points where they just made bad calls, especially that one that you were talking about on the third and 19, where we do an all-out blitz, an all-out blitz. So basically we send eight, and all you have is your free safety and your two corners, and everybody else is running after the uh, – running after the passer, and yep. we don't account for the back coming out of the backfield. And on a third and 19, we give up 20 yards? you got to be kidding me. Just disgusted a little bit, but, you know. Kyle, what say you? I think that I agree with um, with most of the stuff that, that you brought up, uh, Brian and Brandon. If we're talking particularly about the, the third and 19. Um, I mean, we were talking in the pregame show about the numbers versus the blitz. For Tannehill, you know, the worst rated quarterback in the history of the NFL, uh, third and long (laughs) versus the Blitz. Um, So um, I definitely agree with you that an all out Blitz was not the call to make. Um, Maybe something with um, you sending uh, even seven uh, with uh, with good man coverage on it. But what you're getting when you you send Adams and you don't cover the back out of the backfield is exactly what happened. I mean, this is the NFL. This is the best league in, in the world. They're going to be able to pick up blitz when, when, when you do it, especially if you don't cover the guys that are eligible receivers. So we got burn on that, um, and it probably was not the best call to make. The, um, the end of the half was, was problematic for me with that we, we should have gotten three points out of the end of the half. And the, the Herndon thing at the end, 
Uh, throwing a ball in the middle of the field when you have no time I agree. on yeah. the clock is just it's it's bad clock management and it's 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 a bad decision. Now, I said to Brian before we got on the air too, like this is game one of the frustrating games that we're gonna have with a rookie quarterback starting. Um, he at times was made uncomfortable by what Miami was doing on defense. His pick was baited, um, the first pick. It was. Um, uh, that was that was something that uh, that that the linebacker baited him on, and and that's a rookie mistake. The second pick, you know, you gotta you gotta look at that film, and you gotta say uh, was prior the one that was wrong for that or not. But it's still it's a red zone turnover, and the fact that we were getting we were creating turnovers on defense um, and putting ourselves in a position to have a you know some sort of answer you know off off of good defensive plays. It's a shame that we weren't able to capitalize on more things, but I think we left at least, you know, six points on the field in the first, you know, going to the end of the third quarter, where oh, uh, more. we could have gotten we could have gotten field goals, um, and and cut that down a little bit and maybe set the field position up so that it wasn't so good for them. Uh, furthermore, I mean, like the field position in the beginning of the game, first Terrible. two quarters, Terrible. Oh yeah. man. And you you should have a, a field position reset when you give up a touchdown too, and we still were getting ourselves in in bad field position. And I don't know what the third down numbers are going to look like, but um, I think they said something in the broadcast at some point about us being in like we were an average of third and eight. Um, so you know if we're getting in, yeah. in, in those types of situations, no NFL team's good at that. So um, well, I I would say to piggyback on that, we are. Uh, averaging third and eight because there was no running game. You know, right. there was really no running game to speak of. So when you're doing that and not being able to run the ball, you're going to have third and long a lot. And then when you couple that with averaging, you know, I, I forgot what the number was, but again, inside the 10, inside the 20 is where we were starting our drives. Yeah. There was a lot for our rookie quarterback to manage. Yep. That's that's true. And, and I'll tell you what else. Uh, Tannehill had more yards rushing by himself than we did collectively as a team. Crazy. I oh, think he had, yeah, I, I think he had 47 yards rushing, which isn't a lot. And we as a team had, I think, 42 or something like that. So that's 40, not good as a team. That's, 47 yards rushing is a lot for a quarterback in the NFL, though. It, it, that's, it a is lot, a lot. that's a lot of yards rushing. It is, and it's terrible for a team rushing effort. Yeah. So it, it's – it's, it's really, really bad, and um, this is where we are going to have to readjust our game plan. We're going to have to also get more out of the O-line, but we also knew coming in that our O-line was average to above average at best. Mm -hmm. um, but that's where the play calling is going to really come come to play, and this is where our offensive coordinator is really going to have to earn his money because we don't have uh, uh, the Dallas O-line. You know, we have just a very average and on a good day above average O-line that um, they're, they're, they're just going to have to just play better because we have a franchise quarterback back there. And he took some hits today, too, Sam Donald. He took some hits. Yep, he did. And, he, and, and um, I noticed that he got up limping a little bit. It's one of those things where you rub some dirt on it and you walk <laughs> it off, like back in the day, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I think he did that. But I did – listen, I got Hawkeyes on my franchise QB. And I saw him limping, and I was getting a little bit worried. But it was good to see that he walked it off. He's a young kid, um, you know, healthy kid. But uh, I don't want to – I can't get him damaged too early, man, because he's the lifeblood of this franchise. So, uh, and, 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 okay. and, and one other thing um, that kind of bothered me is I feel like we started seeing our pass rush. Copeland had a couple sacks. Um, Anderson, uh, our defensive lineman that we got from Indy, had yeah, a he sack. He had a sack too, yeah. And he also had multiple pressures. Um, Louvu was in there for a couple pressures. I think we might have had four sacks. Um, and also on on a blitz play, uh, Jamal Adams had a sack as well yep. at the very beginning of the game. I think we had maybe four or five sacks. And, Jordan Jenkins had a uh, hurry. Uh, four out of those five cool. sacks came from our front seven. Yeah. Yeah, I would say this. So what was that? So, what'd you say, Kyle? Jordan Jenkins had a fumble recovery uh, on a hurry, so it was uh, it would have been a sack, but uh, but Tannehill dropped the ball, 
and he recovered he it. Fumbled it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say he was, too, he was. Go ahead, Kyle. He was. He was. They. They were pretty decent against the run early on. It was later on that um that they they got him for some long ones. So yeah. you know you mentioned the play calling. We had 19 runs to 41 passes. That's just absolutely absurd when we only lost 20 to 12. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you, you're kind of looking at that, you, 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 it's a lot that you're putting on Sam Darnold at this point in order to throw the ball 41 times. Now, I think that he did well. I don't think that his receivers uh, prior had a hell of a bad game at this point in time, dropping passes. Um, you know, and again, Hearn didn't drop that big ball as well. So, uh, but again, 41 passes versus 19 runs, you got to still stay committed. And I, I understand the game plan. We were down a couple of touchdowns early, so you got to throw the ball a little bit more than normal, but I think 41 is a lot. Did curse have a target? He, I think he had one catch. Cause I, 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 my feed was going in and out. So I, I, I there was parts that I missed, but I didn't see. Uh, Jermaine Curse be a factor at all on offense uh, yeah. while I was watching the game. No. So it was it was almost as if he was inactive. No, not at all. And and where was Darren Lee? Where was Darren yeah. Lee? I mean, he's on a milk carton. You know, after the first game, again, number one ranked linebacker, inside linebacker in the league, and now I don't remember them calling his name. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember them calling his name at all either. Um, I'm looking up, let's see, Jermaine Curse. Where are we here? Uh, Curse, like I said, he had one catch for negative one yard. Is a screen so pass? Was, yeah. So he, he was not a factor. Uh, Pryor had four catches for 84 yards. That one big 41-yard catch, that was his lone great play. Right. Um, I was like jumping up and down when he made that, you know, w- w- with that four three eight speed. I thought he had a chance to take it to the house. Uh, Quincy Anunua missed the consistency. He had seven catches for ninety two yards. Yep. Um, he's our, he's our he's number still... one receiver now. That, I mean, there, no, no doubt about that. And um, that that Herndon drop uh, in the third quarter. Huge. Was, it, it, it may have it may have been the game. Yeah, um, it was because it's that's not something that's out of our control. It wasn't a bad ball. He just dropped it. Throw. Yeah, he yeah. just dropped it. It was those rookie nerves because also, remember, right before the half, he had a nice catch. Then he got popped. He fumbled it. Luckily, he picked it up. But I, I just look at those two plays, and I was like, all righty. He's, he's seeing a little bit more attention. Uh, they're getting him the ball a little bit. And maybe he had to shake off those rookie nerves because he he played like a rookie tonight uh, today. And I also think that he had a couple penalties, too. How do we get? How do we go into Cleveland on Thursday night, ready to play after what happened today? Like, what what do you guys think is going to be the Jets' game plan going into that? Because it's a short week; they're not even going to really they're not going to be able to practice. They might have a yeah. walkthrough or something like that. But usually, the NFL week starts on Tuesday, and um, and then you know you you uh, you go Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, they're really going to have very limited amount of practice and prep. And uh, is Cleveland playing today, or they did they they, they, did they played, play already? They played today. They, played they today. lost to the Saints. Uh, they missed a kick with seconds left. Um, played them and, tough. Played yeah, them played tough. played them tough. So they lost twenty one eighteen. So when you look at uh, Cleveland, they tied against Pittsburgh. Played them tough. Uh, played the Saints tough. They had them down. I think twelve three before the Saints came back and, and played like they should have played the whole game. Uh, and yeah. that was in New Orleans. Uh, so when you're looking at all of that, we're going to go into Cleveland. I think we're, we're playing on the road, right? And yes, I think, we are. And I think that game is going to prove what the rest of the season really is going to look like as far as wins and losses are concerned because we, we, got, we got to go in there. We have to run the ball. We have to mm. run the ball. If we don't run the ball, we're going to get behind. We're going to leave it up to Darnold. Love the kid, but you know he shouldn't be in those positions against teams like this uh, early on in the and, season and, like this. And not yet in, in in this point of his career. I mean, uh, he, yeah, he's not he's not a five year vet, you know. So he, he every time he steps on the field, he's absorbing, he's learning, and we need to make it so that he's learning at a learnable, quote unquote, learnable pace. Yes, absolutely. Instead of 
yeah, in, instead of just being thrown to the wolves, and next thing you know, we have David Carr on our hands, and I don't want that. He learned a lot that. today. He learned a lot today, I yeah. think. Um, yeah. And we learned a lot, we learned a lot about r- being realistic too, um, and what a what a rookie is is going to be like from time to time. I think that also um, we if we come out of the the three week the three games here in two weeks two and one, I think that w- that we're in pretty good shape, um, considering that we didn't know how we were going to do against Detroit. We, we, we always thought that our first three would be very challenging. And, um, you know, maybe I thought we would be one and two with the Miami win, possibly, um, or two and one with, a, with a, a Cleveland. I think all of us picked that Cleveland would win yep. the game yep. uh, early with the, with the preseason prediction. So, you know, going in there, if they're battling two weeks in a row, you know, they're going to be banged up. Uh, we're going in there. We're both going in there early. so. You know, let's let's take a look and see if we can get out of here two and one. Um, what do we have? Jacksonville the week after that? Yes, we do. So Jacksonville yes, looks pretty do. good and early need, against uh, New England too. Yep. Not much and we need to get our run game fixed because that's that's how we won against them last year. And uh, playing how we played today will not work against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Just will not happen. No, we're playing an elite pass rusher in Cleveland too. So. Um, that's not going to get any easier. Listen, if there's a if there's a team that Cleveland is going to get their first win in like uh, it's however us. many it's attempts, us. it's, it's, it's us. going to be it's us. Crazy, it's us. It's going to be us. Well, that's we got to we got to we got to turn that around right there. That, we that's, uh, really, really do. Motivation. We really do. Well, I, I would say the coaching definitely needs to improve, and and you know Todd Bowles is is on the hot seat as far as um, the clock management, like you said, Kyle earlier. Uh, yeah. The end of the first half, that was just – you just got to get points there. So, to me, the rookie quarterback is not responsible for that. You have to make sure that you tell him you can't throw it in the middle of the field. We're not going to be able to have another play after that. But what I would say as far as Donald's concerned is missing a Nunwa, the play before, in the oh. end zone, wide yeah. – open you could tell he was looking to throw the ball away and then he's like yeah. no wait my guy's right in the back of the end zone by himself so you know again Darnold is responsible for the play before that but you know the, the play after that you got I don't know 10 seconds left or whatever the case may be we have no timeouts left you got to tell the quarterback listen don't throw in the middle of the field make sure that it ends up in the end zone otherwise we're not going to have any time left in order to kick the field goal yeah and what a great effort in Nuno made to make that catch even though he fell out of bounds yep it, it was, you know, I, I, I'm loving this guy. Um, and I think that's why I picked him up in fantasy, too. <laughs> I think everybody tried to pick him up in fantasy this week. Yeah, that, yeah I got that him. Was a popular waiver claim. Totally, I put, totally. I put Philip Lindsay uh, ahead of him, so I got him. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, needed, I needed a running back a little worse. Ro- Robbie Anderson is killing me in fantasy right now because uh, he's not – you know, when the noon went back, it's positive for the Jets, but not positive for a fantasy owner that has Robbie Anderson. Not at all. Um, you know, even with Jermaine Curse not getting any targets, you'd think that you'd have um, a good distribution between Robbie Anderson and and the noon one, and uh, especially with him throwing forty one passes. Exactly, so, and and I mean, and to watch their game. Right I'm sorry, Kyle. <laughs> that's tweaking me right now. That's all I was saying. I I hear that, and and, and yeah. the thing is. You know, watch like Robbie Anderson's game and watch Quinty Quinty Anunua's game. I'm going to use an old Bill Parcells uh, uh, phrase when he was talking to Keyshawn Johnson. He said, "Keyshawn, you are a horse. You are not a gazelle. Play like a horse." And meaning like Keyshawn is bigger than, of course, Robbie Anderson. But Robbie Anderson's game, he doesn't have like a quick twitch kind of thing. He's more of a long guy. Straight lines, you know. Speed. Straight line speed. He'll make a cut and then cut across the middle or something like that. But his underneath game, where you kind of have to be like a jitterbug and dance around and make and make people miss to get the first down, he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that quick jitterbug type of thing. Quincy Anunua does, and Quincy Anunua is bigger. It's just how they're made up, you know. So we have to be able to play to the strengths of our players. Quincy Anunua, he can go long, not as long as Robbie Anderson. He can go medium, and he can go underneath and make something happen. He's an all-around really good player. Robbie Anderson, you got to take him mid to deep. 
all the underneath stuff. Like, don't throw a screen to him. I don't want to see that. Not at you all. No, don't line him up in the back, in the backfield, and 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 have him do like a wheel route. It's just not going to happen. Uh, Pryor actually looked better than Robbie Anderson today. Um, if if we're if for all things considered, um, I don't. Do you have how many catches Pryor had? He had at least three, right? Uh, Pryor had four, four for eighty-four. That big dig that he ran at, at the end of the first half. Dig, to, dig. Uh, <laughs> yeah. to set up to set up the, uh, the 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 field goal that we should have kicked. Um, that that was a big play. I mean, if you don't make that play, we're not even talking about clock management there. You're taking a knee and going into the into the locker room. But um, I I don't know. I I think that uh, we're gonna have growing pains for sure. And our defense is not going to be able to win every game for us. It's not the Baltimore Ravens defense of, uh, you know, whatever year that was, 2000-something. Was it 2000? Is that long ago? Uh, yeah, 2000, 2001, I think, that that Baltimore yeah. Ravens defense. Yeah, yeah. Ray Lewis is flying all over. old men. Yeah. <laughs> old men. So uh, now, I look like- like, now me and Trent Dilfer look alike, so. <laughs> 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 so, so like, yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, we're going into Cleveland. They had three sacks today against that Saints uh, offensive line, and they also had two forced fumbles. So that's what we're walking into. Got you. Got you. Well, you know what? I mean, let's be honest here. They're walking into something, too. Um, but we just need to put it all together because, honestly, if you put the whole body of work together – as far as the defense, the effort and, and, and the plays that they made, I think overall the defense had a really good game. And as a matter of fact, you know, when we were going to uh, go into our tweak me, peak me, I'll just do it a little bit early. But uh, one of the things that peaked me was the, was the defense um, and the pass rush that I was surprised to see how well they rushed the passer, how many sacks we got, and then how much pressure we were putting on uh, uh, Tannehill which made him, you know, flushed him out of the pocket. I just wish that, you know, our linebackers had more wherewithal to chase him down so that he wouldn't get those big gains that he was getting to outrush us as a team. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, all right, so was that your whole tweak me, pig me? No, it wasn't. I, I just <laughs> – I'll, I'll get into it again. I just kind of just said it early because I kind of want to be even uh, more demonstrative in the way that I say it. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all right so give me a second i'll get the the music up and we can actually go yeah. into the official all right let's, do, me, it. Tweak me, let's since do it brandon just went on his own accord here, yeah you know i kind of did i kind of <laughs> did hold on I'm, I'm, I'm emotional i'm an emotional jet fan what do you want from me that's right we're all emotional we're all i know our feelings right now i love that kelly green you got on too Kyle. That's hot. thank you thank you did thank you, you know. check did you check i had the kelly green with with the with the hat on too and he's in uh, uh, yeah in I, I saw that i saw that yeah yeah yeah. I got, he's, he's I got in the Adam camo Schefter's green basement. right now i got the camo green yeah in- i got I, I got the still shot on the uh on the, the archive footage that's yeah. hot and, yeah <laughs> i look like, a, like where's waldo or something like that and, and you that's know kyle's right. in uh adam schefter's basement you, you do you do know Funny. that, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's low key. You know, low hey. key Adam Schefter house. Low key. Did you uh, guys know that? Did you guys know that Adam Schefter's from Long Island? He is. Yeah, huh? he, yeah, he's he from was, Belmore. He was at the um, the Big Daddy football camp that um, that uh, Richie Salgado puts together every year. Salgado, that yeah. um, and uh, Jim Salgado, he's the receivers coach for the Bills. He's, they're both New Hyde Park guys, so I know. I think he's the DB coach for the Bills. He was he was rece- They moved them from receivers to oh, DBs. They moved I think. Oh, yeah, okay. but he, he he they might have moved them the way that you're saying. I, I last time I checked, he was doing receivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, For, former teammates, former Hofstra teammates of mine. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Salgado, right. both the brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Both of them. Yeah, um, Richie is like so yeah, the. Cool dude. He's like the insurance broker to the stars. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bumped into him like three weeks ago. Not three weeks ago, three years ago. And uh, same same guy. <laughs> yeah, good guy. Real good guy. Real yeah, nice. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, uh, did you queue up that music, B? I, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't Mu- even know if you did. Music yeah, came and went. Bad. Pick me, tweak me. Yeah, we, we are we in that segment yeah. officially. 
So All right, uh, cool, let's rock cool. and roll. Sorry. All right, a little under the weather here, folks. I think the uh, the Jets kind of gave me the flu or something. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but, yes, we are in our Tweak Me, Peak Me segment, and this is where we talk about what tweaks us and then what peaks us, right? So I'm going to go with what is peaking me first. And just to expand on what I said earlier, uh, we can say that the Jets do have a pass rush now. That's what peaks me. Uh, our outside line, linebacker, Brandon Copeland, came up with two sacks. We had, uh, what is it, Henry Anderson, who came up the middle on a sack from, a deep, from his defensive tackle position. Uh, we had uh, our outside linebacker, Jenkins, putting pressure, uh, uh, causing a fumble and getting a fumble recovery as a result of his uh, aggressive pass rushing. Um, I noticed Luvu had some pressures in there as well. So overall, we were able to create pressure. We were able to get some sacks and we were able to get some, you know, uh, 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 some, some defensive stands as a result of the pressure that we put on the quarterback. Unfortunately, however, we, we just were not able to capitalize on this. So that's why I say that um, as, as an overall unit, the defense did play well. Um, it was just like a few plays where, you know, where they just didn't do well in like few specific places. But um, overall, I think we did well. And that, to me, warrants a peak me because that's one of the things that we were worried about. We were talking about Khalil Mack. We got to get him in here. If we can't get him, we need Dante Fowler. We need a pass rusher, pass rusher. And I'm not saying that we don't need these guys or people like uh, Khalil Mack or Fowler or whomever, but to show that we rush the passer efficiently and effectively today without those guys gives me some hope. And that's why it peaks me. Um, on the tweak me side, um, the tweak me side of it, what should I pick? Um, I think it was just basically us coming out, reminding me of how we played last year. I want to put last year in the past. I don't like all of these penalties that are just killing us. I don't, it, it's, it's just, uh, it, it, it feels like just rookie mistakes. Um, Buster Screen with a few penalties. Uh, uh, Kelvin Beecham with a couple penalties and offsides. Things that are either putting us behind the eight ball and killing our drives or things that are killing our defensive momentum. And I feel like we were just doing a lot of that today. Miami is not a good team, and there's no reason why we should have beaten ourselves today. And I feel like we beat ourselves rather than them beating us. But the big thing, and I'm sorry to, you know, keep rambling on, but the big thing for me that really, really tweaked me out was that third and 19, we had Miami at third and 19, okay? We do an all-out blitz. Looks like we rushed eight guys and just left the safety and the two cornerbacks, and no one picks up uh, uh, Frankie Gore coming out of the backfield. Hall of Famer, Frankie Gore coming out of the backfield, and he gets 20 yards. And then that's when it was like, all right, this game is over. And that tweaked me out. All right, Kyle, you next? Yeah, I would say that um, the, what I was piqued by is the roster uh, as it stands right now. I think that um, we on defense, we got a lot of rotational guys that are paying dividends. Um, you got a guy like Josh Martin, who was a fringe starter to begin with, out with a concussion, and then Copeland comes in and does really well. It reminds me of David Bass from last year uh, out of nowhere being a guy that, that has multiple sacks. Luvu um, looked good. Uh, we have, you know, I'm, I'm not as much of a buster screen hater as you guys are. I am. Um, I am. I, yes, Definitely. I, yes, I'm, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very, very aware of that. But I, I think that playing defensive back in the NFL is the hardest thing that, that, that there is, uh, especially nickel corner. Um, because your matchups are, are, are so difficult. So um, I basically think those guys are holding or um, PIing every play. It, it's just about when they get caught and when they don't get caught. Um, and, uh, you know, there was – it, it was funny how I thought our D-line was getting held a lot and not, they weren't calling anything on them. Um, the, some bear hugs on, on the pass rush from the Miami O-linemen. So there's a little inconsistency on that. But I'm piqued by – the uh, the way that the 
the the roster is shaping up except for the o line um but yeah. again we 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 knew that going into this um the things that tweaked me the most were clock management at the end of the half not getting points there um i was tweaked by by some of the uh the special teams play um you know just as far as uh the missed extra point um it's it's kind of a bad day in the league for kickers you know there's a tie in the minnesota green bay game because of multiple missed field goals um and you know when they moved the extra point back they expected there to be more misses but come on guy you know you're a professional kicker on the new york jets make the extra point put us in a position to uh to to come back so um I'm going to leave it at that, but I, I'm also – I'm being cautiously op- optimistic as far as going forward. I know a short week for both squads might actually benefit us. I don't know. Yeah, it, it might it might actually benefit us. All right. So that would be me, right? Um, That's right, boy. So I would say <laughs> this. Boy, hey, boy. Um, <laughs> what is – what tweaked me from the game is the missed opportunities. You know, we had we had a lot of missed opportunities. A perfect example of that was the uh, were two two examples, and I brought these up earlier. End of the uh, first half, not getting points there, and also the the uh, second Darnold interception, which again I, I'm putting on prior. So getting those opportunities to score, get points. You know, if we, if we get the touchdown and a and a three point out of those two drives, I mean, you're talking about. 2220 at that point but we didn't get any points out of either one of those and teams are too good even the Miami Dolphins to not um, take advantage of us when we don't get points off turnovers or when we are in the red zone like that we just have to get points during those drives and what I would say just just peaks me still is Sam Donald he still peaks me uh, 334 yards, 63% completion. Uh, he did have a touchdown, two picks. One again, I'm going to put on prior. And the ability to to stay in there, get hit, get up, and the receivers like Herndon and Pryor again with some drops and stuff in there, uh, he would have had close to 400 yards at the end of the yeah. day had, yeah. had those receivers. That's going to lead us, you know, for the next 10 